Well, hi everybody, welcome to my shop. And look, my bench is empty, and I think that's a good time between radios right now, before I bring the next one in, to uh, show you some uh, tube shields. Now, why would I do this? Uh, well, some questions have been raised about tube shields. I think Robert asked some questions. So I have a few, so I thought I'd show them to you. This is your basic, real cheapo tube shield. Kind of a rusty guy. See the top of it's bent over a little bit, the bottom's not. The tube has to go in one way. If you try to put it in this way, you're going to have a hard time at it. Yeah, this one's bent. Here's another one. Yeah, you can kind of squeeze them down to fit the tube you want. Here's the problem, though. Here's the problem with these. This one's got a tube in it. How do you get the tube out? It's, it's, you know, it's not so easy that you can push. You start pushing on the tube, you have to grip the uh, tube shield. And you're just basically gripping the tube through the tube shield. So there's two, there's two things you can do. First, you can kind of just move this a little bit to make sure it's not rusted tight. See how that's moving there. And the other one is the way you twist the tube as you pull it out will either tighten the shell, the shield, or loosen it. In this case, going this way will loosen it ever so slightly. So if I can just get it turning a bit. I'm trying not to bend the pins because I'm holding it by the pins here. Getting a little bit of pressure from the top. It's a tricky business here. I'm bending the pins now. And maybe somebody knows a better way of doing this. There we go. It's sticking out a little bit now. But you can see the problem with these shields. Uh, this is not easy to do. And meanwhile, as you drag this tube, come on out of there. As you drag this tube through the shield, it's being uh, uh, scraped doesn't matter to the glass, but it's scraping off the words. Isn't this a hassle? Yeah, maybe there's some trickier way of doing this. Come on out of there! <laughs> this is worse than I thought. I'm going to grab one of the pins with my pliers. That's not a good idea, basically. <laughs> This is not a good idea. Don't do this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to grab two pins. I can grab two. And look at that. It's come out. <laughs> and what is it? It's a Rogers. It looks like this tube's had some scotch tape on it right there. Right where the number is six. I can't really see it. 6AT6. A little bit of magnification should help. Yeah, that's that's almost obliterated. I have to study that a little closer, but I won't bother now. So there we are. Here, here's another one. Let's just see if I can do this one a little quicker. It's a bigger tube. Okay, so first, kind of crack the shell on it. <clears throat> now, yeah, there's a good way. If I have something to plunge it against, oh, look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Take a tube, put it there, put it there. Stretch this thing here. <laughs> Get a grip on it. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, hey, this is a nice looking tube. From England. Selectron. Yeah, I can see the chafing and the scratching from the tube shield. And once again, I cannot see the, the number on it. 
but the structure is so apparent inside you can probably figure out what tube that is I and mean, there aren't a lot of tubes that look like that should we do one more no but let's take a look at some more tube shields because i have some more aside from just this dial let, let me get my other tube shields here I have a few to look at. There's more of these kind. Now here, here's an interesting one. It actually has a clamp on it. Other than that, it's just a, a sheet of metal. Okay, here's one. It has these slots in it, so when you put the tube in, the, it grips the tube and actually grips it. That's nice. That's easy to get on and off. I like that. This is a different style entirely. It has these locking pieces at the bottom. So you put it on. There's a fixture down on the on the uh, tube socket, and you lock it in. It has a spring inside. I don't know if you can really see that or not. There's a spring up in there, and so it's putting pressure on the tube, holding it into the socket. So this locks the tube in, and this you'll find in all. You know, uh, military radios and things like that. Here's another version here, much lighter aluminum one. Got, got quite a few here. Here's one that's very old. It's tapered. And also, these tend, you know, these work best, not always, but usually when they are grounded. So they need to go down the tube and hit the chassis somehow and pick up a ground connection. And that's what's going on with this flanged end here. Here's one that's got holes put through it. Um, conceivably, that's to improve the tube's cooling by letting some air come through. Um, these things are generally fairly neutral on the tube temperature. Uh, some people might think they cool them. They Apparently there's only one kind that does. I don't see any of those here. Here, here's something odd. A cardboard tube with some brass cover on it and a, what would be a ground wire, I would imagine. Now the effect this can have, I think I was writing something in one of my uh, YouTube answers. Uh, and I mentioned that basically uh, the tube can affect um, signals going in and out of the tube. It can also affect the tube's operation itself. The interelectrode capacitance can be, I think it's increased by putting on one of these. And so that's why my, my main point about these things is if the radio design calls for them, they should be installed. If the radio design does not call for them, you should not install them. Although, you know, I'm one for, uh, I'm all about uh, experimenting. There's another one of those tapered guys. So you know, we, we could try this on radios. And see, and this one's got a big metal, big metal piece up here. Some kind of enhanced enhancement of some sort. There's two of them. I actually have two of them like that. Big. I've never seen that big, big heavy metal part on there. I think I have a few more to look at. Let, let me see if I can find a few more here. Okay, I got a few more. Let's see. Let's see what they look like. There they are. So here's a there's a strange one. Look at that one. You can really see the spring in it, and it has those locking parts. There's some nice shiny ones. These almost certainly have come from uh, military. Radios, but I'm, I can't can't be absolutely sure. There's some more with holes in them. Yeah, that's a little like what was on the radio on the Rogers uh, Majestic radio we're just working on. Another one's just it's just a thin shell. Looks like <laughs> looks like it's styled after a garbage can or something. What else have we got? Oh, I see Draper has come to see what all this action is here. Come on up, Draper. Here he comes. Yes. Draper, come come help me check these things out. That's the way, yes. Let's sort through these together, Draper. So I don't know if that's one or, or two in there. Oh look at that. 
Extendo. What do you think, Draper? There's one. That, that goes on the top of your uh, rocket. Pretty sure. Draper, where are you going? Okay, here's another one. It kind of looks like it's brass. Brass looking anyway with these clips right on it. And clip on there. Oh, it looks like a couple of uh, cap connectors. Or a cap connector, not a couple. Unless I cross my eye. What, what do you think here, Draper? Look at this one. Oh, we already looked at that one. And here's another one. It's just a metal with a, a clamp. Look, it has some kind of grip on the bottom again to probably help make it make electrical contact. Another tapered one. Okay, here's one with another bottom on it. That's what's this? Here's here's an interesting one. There's one with a rounded top. Gene got these clips. Well, you just get <laughs> Come on now, you can't get you can't just move right in here among <laughs> I guess he's decided this is a nice place. Now there's one with a uh, big metal. Big metal piece. It's heavy too. It's very heavy. Look at heavy metal. Almost like lead. Gee, I wonder. I wonder if that would be lead. A little bit surprising. Not magnetic. Don't know if it would matter if it was magnetic. Well, I suppose it would, since you have electrons uh, flowing uh, inside the tube. If you uh, put on a, uh, there we go. How about that. What do you think of this one? Here's another one. Here's his brother. Just unusual shapes. And oh, there's another one with the. Huge piece of metal on it. I'm really wondering where these go because I've never seen them in use. That's a substantial piece of metal there. Yes, that's right. That one right there. Yeah, show us your show us your claws. <laughs> I know. I know it's kind of weird what's going on here. Surely there's something. To, you know, I know what you're looking for. You're looking for something to hockey around the floor. So this is interesting. Here's the base that these would clip onto. And it's a little out of focus for you, but there's a little bump there. And one of these slides over and then locks. And of course the spring inside the spring inside makes it push back into the lock. Isn't that right there? <laughs> well, I'm not sure I got anything else here that's too interesting. Really, really excited about being in here. Yeah, you pick around in here. See if you can find a good one. Maybe there's a gold one in here. Since I'm always looking for that bar of gold in one of these radios. Interesting way of storing them. I guess if they're tapered, you can get away with that. Anyway, there's my myriad of tube shields. And I uh, hope you got a kick out of seeing that. And thanks, Draper, for helping us out on this one. I think you're just going to go to sleep here now for the rest of the uh, rest of the afternoon. Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. So you're claiming these are yours now. This is what's going on, right? You want these in your toy box upstairs. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think these would make very good cat toys. I really don't. I mean, look at them. They're funny shape and they'll make sounds and they'll rattle around on the floor and, and move in funny ways. So I don't see how this would ever make a good cat toy. So anyway, from my shop with Draper and me, thanks for watching and uh, soon we'll be back on to a radio.